and welcome back to another episode of Dump Run. If you're not familiar with this series, what it is is I'm making an animated short film in Blender, step by step doing it all live so you can see every single detail. And I'm in the midst of a 30 day challenge to try and get an episode out every day for 30 days. That's why today I'm doing one, even though my voice sounds like uh, I'm a frog. So that's going to be fun for you guys. Uh, yeah, got a bit of a cold, um, but that's all right. We'll get through it. All right, so let's figure out what we got to do today. So <clears throat> we finished mapping out our shots. We got all of our shots in place. Now we need to go through and, you know, in layout, we're just blocking out poses. We're kind of like getting the rough vibe of the animation down so that we can really think about the cameras and the cutting pattern and the way the scene's going to come together. Now it's really important that we kind of stop, take stock, and begin to uh, upgrade that animation, get stuff looking really good. So... I think my plan at this point is to go back through from the beginning and try and refine the moments where we're still lacking uh, specific animation stuff. So let's go back uh, here to the beginning and let's get to work. All right. I'm going to go find my little uh, droid. Uh, we're going to work with him mostly, I think, today. So here he is. So we fall out of the top. Let's just have a look at that. All right. All right, let's get this animation working. We've been neglecting this since the very beginning, so it's been a very long time. Now, there's a there's a couple of questions in my head. One of them is how much interaction am I going to want with the surrounding debris? Um, I was thinking about potentially like using some of these pieces as particles and like shooting them off or doing some dynamics, like having a couple of pieces like falling down and cascading around him. Um, but that also could be quite intensive to like get that to work right. Like if I was going to simulate it um, using like rigid body dynamics. In a lot of cases, it's easier to just hand animate that kind of stuff. So I might do that, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm just going to think about him. So, so let's get let's get this moment. Let's just work through moment by moment. It's really easy. One one thing to keep in mind: it's really easy to get overwhelmed uh, when you're approaching like a whole sequence. You're like, okay, I'm going to animate this sequence. Uh, it's it's best to just jump in and start doing tiny bits and just focus on the little thing in front of you. So I just need him to fall, fall a bit better. And he's very straight and organized. So uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a funny pose right here at the start. And uh, also just want to make sure that his fall is. What's actually animating his fall? Is it the armature itself? Did I do that? Tell me I didn't do that. Uh, object. So, oh my goodness. I did. This is how I used to work. I don't really do this anymore. I find it too annoying having to like work with the armature, like the the uh, the object transform and then the bones. I kind of just leave the object transform somewhere. I just do it all with the bones these days. but. That's the problem when you start a short film. It takes so long you adapt and develop your style. Um, that's all right. Okay, let's go back to pose mode. Let's get a good pose in here. We need to we need to make sure this is linear as well. So I'm going to rotate this Z location key so that it's a straight line. That means it won't be speeding up or slowing down. He's just going to be moving at a constant rate. And because he lands pretty hard, I don't want him to like slow down before he lands. Like that doesn't make sense. So I want to take this and I'm actually going to S to scale and zero. That will make this as if it's a linear key. Um, and this one I'll just re-straighten up again. You might be asking yourself, like, why don't I just make it a linear key? You know, you can select these keys, right click, interpolation, linear. Um, the reason for that is it affects the way, like, this key is a Bezier, right? Um, and I, if I made this linear, it would make it all linear right up until this key. And then it would be Bezier from the point on. And... I like. I think I find it's a bit easier to kind of work with it. If you keep it all busy, then you can kind of really get those curves at any point you want. Um, and sometimes I do reverse my plan and I go back and I want to have stuff with curves and uh, it's just like how I like doing it. But I find I can get a much cleaner result. Um, you'll find too, as I'm working in the graph editor, I'm holding down control and middle mouse clicking a lot. And this is the way to kind of zoom. If you move up and down with your mouse, you zoom on the vertical and left and right zooms on the horizontal. So. That's how I'm doing that. And then mouse wheel, of course, to move in and out. And then shift, middle mouse is the, the way you move around. So I'll be doing that pretty much the exclusively. That's, that's how I, I control it. Okay, so he falls down. Let's 
Now, I want to be thinking about this shot, okay? I don't want to worry too much, you know, zoomed in really close, doing lots of detail in this pose, because I'm really ever going to see him this tiny up at this point because of the shot. So we don't need to invest too much, but we do need to make him look a little bit better. So make sure auto keying is turned on. And just get, uh, get his feet kind of up. This rotate his body and I'll have this up like he's kind of looking up where he came from. That's cool. Rotate a bit on the Z and just looking at, you know, what does he actually look like? This is the point of impact. So at this point, what I might do is like bring his legs up like that so that he's like falling backwards onto his back. <clears throat> Again, sorry for my uh, graphic voice. Luke, I am your father. All right. So there we go. We don't even see him at this point. So this is really just about the interpolation between those keys. That's all we need. Douche. All right, and he goes up. Now, with bouncing, what you want is the landing keys, you want them to be really sharp. And the keys where he's arcing, you want those to be uh, nice and round. So let's have a look at that fall path. He goes. So this one right here, we're going to scale zero. It's a sharp key. I'll take this one and I'll just rotate it. So it's kind of in line with the arc of his fall. Now I feel like, let's see, he's moving on the X's forward, just looking up here to see kind of which direction. As a reminder, let's have a look at these keys. Because I think we'll want the same, the same kind of, uh, you know, sharp, sharp keys on the lands. So we'll grab this one. Let's get zero. So I really want to be looking at this and uh, this. These are my two key groups. It'd be a little tough to kind of see the arc because of the difference in those values, but that's okay. We'll just kind of swap back and forth between these two. All right. Let's have a look at his arc. We're just like, make sure it's a nice clean arc. Doof. Okay, so is this a land? It's kind of hard to tell where this next one is. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this is the one. Uh, I'm going to switch to individual origins, which I'm there, and S0. I'll scale those guys to zero. So now he strikes, and it's a sharp key. It is an immediate change of direction. Another bump here. Grab that. Scale zero. So, good. That looks good. So I'm just looking at that arc. I'm watching his path. I'm making sure it feels right. And um, pretty happy with this. This moment where he goes in, that could be a good moment to like maybe do a little burst of debris. Uh, I think that looks good. Might just for just in case we see him later, I'll make that one sharp as well. Now he's buried. Okay, cool. Now uh, we've got one problem here. You can see that we've changed his pose and it's really affected all this stuff. That's all right. There we go. <laughs> okay, now let's see how this plays. He's falling. It's good. I want that shot to be really confusing, but still like focused on him. What I might do is give this center moment, I might turn his eye to face us because I think that his eye is going to be really recognizable um, as a character piece. So let's, let's do that. I'm going to grab, uh, let's see, the look control. Okay, good. So we don't really have any keys here for this. Although it looks like these guys are, oh, they're stepped. So let's switch this to Bezier. 
let's just hit A to select all of his controllers and then A to select all channels. Let's box select all this stuff and make sure it's set to Bezier. We'll make sure we've got Bezier curves going now. All right. Now, like I said, from this point, I'm going to have him kind of turn towards camera so that his eye is kind of facing us a little bit for more of this fall. Okay. So I'm going to select this controller and I've got a lot of keys, right? I can see I've got a lot of keys. Um, and I want to make sure I've only got, I've got um, only show selected turned on here. I'll turn on show hidden too, just in case. What I want to do is I want to actually look for a moment in these keys where I've got a bit of a gap. Um, Cause I don't want to have like a, a jump where, you know, I, I move this right and it sets a new key, but I've got like a key right before it. And then we're going to have this like snap kind of moment. So if I use the up and down arrow, I can actually just move to my existing keys already. Now I've got a couple options. I could delete some keys. Some of these might be redundant. I don't need them as much, so I can delete some, or I could just find a, a key that's already existent and, and use that as the basis for this. So I, I can, this is kind of the moment where I want him to start looking towards us. So what I will, I will use this key and um, I'm going to just have a look for my camera, which is always going to be the camera with the black hat on top, the black triangle. That'll be the active camera. And I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to turn him to see what this looks like. Now I just want to have his eye visible. So I don't want to like, I don't necessarily need him to like look at camera, right? Um, I just want to be able to see his eye um, a little bit. Now I can rotate his body as well. I think that looks like a little bit more of a natural, natural pose. And I will rotate these feet some. Go. Might bring this leg down a little bit, so we've got more of a clear like read on his profile. Maybe take this leg out. Yes. Okay. All right. So it's going to be. All right, so now I'm going to select his um, look controller again, and I want to jump to the next key, and this one I'm going to bring up as well. Okay, so let's see how that plays. So you can see here he's looking at camera a lot more now. Makes him a lot easier to identify, even though the shot's really crazy. Now I feel like his legs need to move a little bit. So what I might do is I'm going to go to him. Okay, we'll stop to jump to where he's at. I'm going to grab his feet and uh, I'm going to start off with this. So again, I'm going to look for a key that exists already. So I'll hit down. That's a key. I'm going to have his legs kind of trailing behind him. So, you know, this momentum of his fall, I want to have his, the legs kind of like the feet are heavy and they're, they're trailing behind him. So kind of a bit of a lag where he hits and then his legs collapse in and then his body goes and then his legs follow. So a bit of overlapping uh, action um, is what I want to do here for this. So don't want his legs to go straight, but just a little bit there. And then I might, might rotate on the Y and on the X. Go. Looking up here on this frame, I just want to see them like pointed. There we go. I might angle this one as well a bit more. That's good. And then bam, he's going to hit. And then I want to have the feet kind of fling in front of him. <coughs> Sorry about that. So we're going to go boom, 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 down, hit. So I need a key to like lock the pose because I kind of want them to be um, like that. I could use the existing key that's right here that I can see. So this one. I don't know if that's the right time. 
Yeah, I think I think I need to have it just before he hits. He hits there. So I'm going to come right to here, I think. And with the two feet selected, shift select, I've got both selected. I come here in I, and I want to do the location and rotation. So you can see I get a new key right here. And I'm going to go forward, come to this key, and I will grab both of them and slide them forward like this. looking right just like this bring these knee joints around just so we can see the shape I think that's good yeah cool Ooh. Let's have a watch of that. So it falls. Yeah. So you can see we can read him a lot better now. It's a lot clearer. Even though it's a really chaotic shot, you know, with motion blur and stuff, the whole thing's going to be insane. Um, and I want to put some shake in it as well. Let's look at it slowly. It might be even too much. Like he's kind of moving a lot in the frame. That's all right. I could try adding one more with him looking towards us. I think this one could work. Maybe. Bring his eyes a bit, like bring him a bit sooner as well here. This. Yeah, that reads. It's a bit too much now. I feel like I he's lost that realistic sense of momentum. I feel like that last one that we did didn't really serve us very well. So let's get rid of that one. Where was it? It was right about here, I think. Do. How does it feel with just this one? Let's see. Come back, play. It's a bit too much. Just let him have a natural flow, I think. Well, another thing we can do is we can look at his curves, okay? And look for weird kinks or sections where stuff really goes goes nuts. Like I can see right here, uh, the look control, the X, that's a bit of a sharp move. So I might pull that out. Let's just have a look at the Y and the Z for that. Yeah, they're all pretty sharp. So we'll just pull these out. This kind of thing can really help you know, make the curves a bit, a bit nicer. We'll take out weird pops and stuff. All right, so yeah, that feels pretty good. Cool, all right. I'm just gonna have a look and see what my camera's got going on. So I'm gonna shift B to select my camera. Again, I've set that as my hotkey under select, select active camera, right click, you can change the shortcut. I set that to Shippy. I just want to see what kind of shake I've got, if any, on this camera. I can't remember what we did. All right, so we don't really have any. Uh, cool. All right, so what I want is like a bit of shake in the the tilt. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to select this channel for this camera. And then I'm going to come over to modifiers. These are so good, so, so useful. Um, and I'm going to add in a noise modifier. You can see my curves go nuts. I'm going to take the, the strength right down though. So just a little bit. 
And uh, also I want to just preview this section. So I'm going to hit B to box select. I'm going to drag a box around these keys and then hit Control Alt P. That will set my preview range to just those keys. So now we can have a look at what that looks like. Now this is going to be pretty erratic. So, you know, I don't know. Let me see. What's our frame rate? I'll just turn on my turn on text info. Okay, so we're getting about 13 frames a second. So we're missing about 10 frames. Um, so it'd be good to try and speed that up. One way we can do that is by getting rid of one of our viewports. So I can switch that to the text editor. So we'll keep text info on. So you can see now we're up to 15 frames a second. Um, I could get rid of the geometry nodes, but I feel like that's really helping us. Um, one thing that you can do is you can also deactivate collections that contain other characters. That will really enhance your performance. So now you can see we're hitting 24 frames a second pretty consistently. So this will help us really get a good read on this, sh this shot. So let's deactivate that noise with the tick box. All right, it's already pretty insane. Maybe what we need is to kind of smooth this camera out a little bit, because I feel like there's way too much. I don't know. It's hard to say without seeing it rendered, but... Um, and I feel like we even need a little bit of this going on in here. So, all right, let's just have a look at what is happening. We don't really have any Y rotation. So we could add a little bit of this. We could add some noise in this. Let's do a noise on the Y. Um, but I'm going to take the strength down and the scale way up. So it's just really kind of gentle rolling hills. That'll just put in a little bit of rock. Just add, add to the craziness. Increase that scale up even further. Okay, now let's go to the X rotation. Let's have a look at this first key. Let's actually go tilt up a little bit, like we're actually with him at the start. And I might grab this one back a touch. Grab this one back a touch. Just playing with how we tilt down with him. It's nice if like we're not spot on with him. Um, but at the same time, we also don't want things to go too wild. So um, one thing you want to think about as you're animating a camera, especially at this stage where you're like really refining stuff, you want to think about what it would be like if an actual operator was using the camera, right? So there's a little bit of lag, you know, like the guy moves quickly, so the cameraman's going to react, but he's not going to be instantaneous. He's not going to anticipate the move. That can help your cameras really get a nice feel. I feel like this bit is a bit, a bit too much. So I might, I might bring this one down. Let's see if we can get this to feel a bit smoother. Just looking at how steep these curves get, right? You want to you watch the steepness. So if it gets too steep, then you're going to have really fast kind of jerks. Okay, cool. Now let's have a look at these other keys. We're just looking at the position and stuff. All right, so these are really clean, so that's good. So the X, Y, and Z, the motion is really clean. So it's just this panning stuff that's going to be a bit bumpy. Let's have a look at the Y. That's fine. Z. All right, so Z's got some weird stuff going on. This is the pan. Um, I feel like, let's see, where do I really notice it? Now, one thing we can do is we can actually, if I turn on my, my visibility, see, I've got this grid turned on. If I go to my camera settings, um, under composition guides, we've got thirds and center. Um, these are really helpful for having a visual way of queuing if you've got the middle of the frame. Another way is to turn on limits, and this will show you the focal plane, like how far away, like where the focus is set to, which is something we'll need to do as well. Um, and that gives you a nice big yellow cross in the middle that you can use to make sure things stay centered or think about you know, how, how your camera is going. So I can see here we drift off quite a bit on this. So I might, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these keys and I'm gonna scale Y. 
but I'm going to use the bounding box center. And that will bring them all closer together so it's a bit less. So the reason why we're losing them, we must be drifting off to the left. Let's see, what's our cardinal direction? So Y, I think we're drifting off on the Y. So I might take my Y location and I might flatten it as well and use that to keep him centered. So I think that'll actually work better. I know we don't have, we don't see these keys, so I shouldn't bother working so much on those. Okay, I'm going to take this moment and I'm going to try and find him a bit, try and track with him a little bit better. I mean, it's nice losing him a little bit. Cool. And let's go back to the Z rotation and Crazy shot. I feel like I've lost something. Like it doesn't feel quite as good as what it originally did when we started to refine it. Sometimes that'll happen. You'll kind of start tweaking things and you're like, oh, actually, it's losing some of its original flair. Um, let's compare it to the old camera. So, in this particular case, where I'm like, oh, I'm not so sure fall close up is working. Like oh, it's kind of good before. What you can do is I'm going to go ahead and save this file. So save as plus save. What we can do is um, I can come up here and go file append. And append basically means import. So I can go back to my previous file. So 16 and click append. This will take me inside the blender file. And now I've got all the things that live inside it. I want to go to camera. And uh, it's going to list all the cameras. So let me go to object. That'll actually give me the camera name, I think. So I want uh let's see, 0200. There it is. So scene 10200 V1 fall close up. So I'm going to click append. That will bring it in. <clears throat> so. There it is. So it's stuck in this props collection. It put it whatever collection you have selected. So I, had, I guess I had props selected. Um, and it'll add this 0 0.001 at the end of the name. So it iterates up. So I'll just bring this back up here. So now I've got two versions. And what I can do is I can hit F2. And uh, actually, I'll go up to this one. And I'll hit F2. And I'll call this one V2. So version 2. And then this one, I'll just get rid of. So F2, get rid of that in bit. So this is the original camera for that. So now what I can do is I go back here, I can lock that camera on and I can hit control B to look at V1 now. We can compare. Yeah, I think that does feel better. I don't know. Let's leave it. Let's leave it. I think it's good. I think it's good. His action's really working well, that animation. I've got V2. I can always go back to it if I feel like it needs it. Like we might need it like when we do the rendering. You know, we might need to do it. Uh, one thing we didn't try, which we should look at, is changing the lens size. So we're at a 75. Like if we pop to a 70, just give it a little more room to breathe. Like that's kind of cool. Let's go 65. Let's turn off everything so we can really see the shot without all the noise of the controllers. There's some, there's a weird, I don't know what that is. I hate that at the end. There's like this. Let's have a look at what the camera's doing. So let's go into the 3D viewport and let's zoom out. 
And let's have a look at this camera, see what it actually is doing. Okay, so it's moving nicely. It's just feel like there's a, a bump in it somewhere. It's going to be just from these two. This makes a difference. It's less extreme. A bit better, actually. I think it's this moment. It feels like it slows down. Let's let him kind of lead frame a little bit. The other option, which could clear this up, is actually take the camera and shift D, F2, we'll kill this would be three. And what I'll do is I'll lock V3 onto the timeline. Control B to bind and with version three, what we could do, let's try, let's see what happens if we just get rid of these, right? So um, I'll just hit A to select all and X to delete. Okay, so we just have the motion of the camera moving and we keep, we let him kind of bounce into frame. All right, let's maybe take the tilt down just a touch. All right, so now I can see what's happening. Look at that. See, he's actually, with one of his bounces, he's kind of moving left to right, which doesn't quite feel right. Let's let's see what's going on. I wonder if it's because he's off the center of of uh, off the center of gravity, like off of his armature. Let's have a look at that. Let's see if we can see it from this angle as well. Yeah, that's it. The armature is rotating. And that's going to create some weird motion, which is not what we want. And I could try and counter animate that. It's really just this moment where I feel like he's kind of moving along that way. So let's see if we can trick it. Let's try and let's try and do this. So I'll just set a location rotation keyframe for that. Um we really want to just be messing with the Y location, I think. And at this point, let's move it so he's kind of more centered to frame. So now he's going to come up and he'll stay more centered. Yeah, that works. Another thing we could try is we grab all these on the camera. I wonder if we're like in front of him a bit more so we can get below him more. So I could take all these keys and grab X and just shift them to the left, right? That will put us below him a bit more. Yeah, that's good.
I could find a nice sweet spot where we're like not losing him too much. So we're gonna center him up a bit more. It's look good. I think this works a little bit better than the other one we had. Uh, now we can do is we can introduce maybe a bit of shake into the uh, the X rotation. So to do that, what I need to do is set a keyframe uh, for it, even though we're not animating it. So if I go to my X location, sorry, my X. Rotation, there we go. Um, it's just nice and straight. So I can grab this and go modify our noise. And see, it's going to add stuff going on. So let's take the strength right down. Maybe the scale down too, so it's sharper. You can also add the, some depth to it that'll make the noise more complex. And you don't need 20 depth, but like, like three maybe. Cool. Grab everything again and get below them a bit more. That's nice. We'll have to see how it plays with motion blur, but I think this is cool. This is working out pretty well. I need to go with my Z rotation a little bit. Um, like he's kind of staying a bit, a bit too left of frame. All right. Now, probably what we could do is shift S selection to current frame. Probably, let's move this out a little bit, and then I'll uh, I insert for the active only selected channel, and then let's move this one up. We start kind of hand up at him. Remember what happened if we go down? like through the whole shot in a real nice clean arc. Take the strength down a little bit more. Cool. All right, let's compare it back to the beginning. So we'll go back to this one. Uh, we'll close up, control B to find that. To, to this one. I don't know yet. I'm not sure which one's the better <laughs> after all that. I mean, this is what it's like when you're refining something. You gotta try things. Now I'm back. I don't know. You let me know in the comments which one you like best V1, V2, or V3. I think V1's still my favorite, even after all of it. Um, I think little tweaks to having him look towards camera are really helpful. I think it looks good. Um, so, yeah, there we go. We've refined the first two shots. Nice. Douche, 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 douche. 
I could see little like chunks of debris flying up being a really good, really good idea for this. That's heaps better now. Heaps better than what it was. Awesome. All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up there for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like button and uh, leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel, check out the Patreon, do all the things. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic day. Bye.